Hello, American Patriots. Douglas Dakota here again. I am at the United States Air Force Armament Museum, Eglin Air Force Base, outside of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And I'm going to give you a tour of the Armament Museum and the aircraft that are out here and tell you a little bit about them. So, here we go. First, you're looking at what's called the A-10 Warthog. This is an A-10A model, Thunderbolt II. The A-10 was basically built around a gun. That gun that you see sticking out the front right there. Fairchild Republican Corporation built this type aircraft. They built 715 of the A models. We're still using the A-10 today. Of course, a newer version than this one. It had one pilot on board. It was uh, generated by two turbofan engines rated at 9,065 pounds of thrust each. Weighed 24,959 pounds empty and it had a 50,000 pound max gross weight. Uh, had a cruise speed of 340 miles an hour with a max speed of 439. It's basically designed to attack uh, tanks and ground forces and armament on the battlefield. It could climb up to 45,000 feet, had a range of approximately 2,440 miles with uh, drop tanks added, and this one doesn't have any tanks on board. And it's got one 30 millimeter GAU 8A seven barrel Gatling gun. This thing can shoot uh, 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance on 11 different platforms, MK-82, MK-84s, incendiary cluster bombs, combination effect of munitions, nine dispensering munitions, AGM-65 Maverick missiles, laser or electro optical guided bombs, and 2.75 inch rockets, AIM-9 missiles, flares, chaff, and other electronic countermeasure pods. DM marking is Davis Monthan Air Force Base. These are the pylons where you can hang all the extra ordnance off of. And it's basically just a flying tank. Next up is the F-16. This is an F-16A model. It's called the Falcon. It's a multi-role fighter aircraft. It's also used by the United States Air Force Thunderbirds flight demonstration team. This F-16A model was built by General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin Corporation. They built 674 of the A models, had one pilot. There are a two-seater version of this. There is a two-seater version. It's got one Pratt & Whitney uh, turbofan engine rated at 23,830 pounds of thrust. It's got a weight of 18,900 pounds, empty, 33,000 max pounds. Speed is 1,345 miles per hour max. Typical cruise speed of the F-16A was 577 miles per hour. You go approximately 1,407 miles. Has aerial refueling capability. Can climb up to 55,000 feet. Armament is one M61A1 20 millimeter multi-barrel cannon and up to six air-to-air 
missiles, conventional air-to-air, -air, and air-to-surface munitions and electronic countermeasures are also available in this aircraft. The gun that they just talked about is right there off to the side of the cockpit. That is a fuel tank. You can hang bombs, other munitions off the pods here. And this is a sidewinder missile. Now we're looking at a C-130. I did my last uh, live show in front of this aircraft. It is the AC-130A uh, model. And basically it's a gunship. Armament is two 7.62 millimeter GAU 2BA mini guns, two 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons and two 40 millimeter buffer cannons. Again, these things hanging off the wings over here are fuel tanks, not bombs. And I believe today's version of the AC-130 is a J model. Next is the F-15 Strike Eagle. This is an F-15A model made by McDonnell Douglas Corporation. McDonnell Douglas built 384 F-15A models. Uh, thrust was Turbofan engines rated at 25,000 pounds of uh, thrust. Weights 28,000 pounds empty, 68,000 pounds max. A cruise speed of 570 miles per hour at a max speed of 1,875 miles per hour. Can fly 3,450 miles with fuel tanks installed, which are the big things hanging underneath the pylon right there. Surface ceiling on 65,000 feet. Had one 20 millimeter M61A1 Gatlin cannon and four AIM-7 Sparrows and four AIM-9 Sidewinders or eight AIM-120 missiles. And we're still using the F-15 today in the United States Air Force.
this beautiful aircraft is no longer in our inventory. It was a wonderful platform during the Vietnam era. It's the F-111. It was originally ordered in 1960. Uh, it's flown in many different kind of conflicts. Vietnam, the Gulf War, uh, during Desert Storm. They also had a, uh, a version of it that was uh, EF-111. Also flew in Bosnia in 95. Uh, wonderful airplane. Powered by two turbofan engines. Rated at 18,500 pounds of thrust with an afterburner. Cruise speed is 685 miles per hour, 100, or 1,452 max. Can fly 3,565 miles with tanks. Surface ceiling is 60,000 feet. Armament was one 20 millimeter cannon and 5,000 pound uh, of bombs internally. Six pilots can carry up to 25,000 pounds of bombs or two nuclear weapons internal and four nuclear weapons external and it had a crew of two i believe and if i'm not mistaken there are still actually some other countries that have a few of these left still flying. I think Germany is one of them, possibly in the UK, but I'm not 100% sure if they're still doing that. Next up is the old World War II bird, the C-47, also known as the DC-3. This particular one was converted into a gunship DC-3 is the civilian version of it. And this version, the gunship version, is called the uh, AC-47. A little bit about the 47. It was built by McDonnell Douglas Corporation. Had a crew of uh, four crew members on the K model, seven crew members on the uh, D model, two radial engines at 1,200 chef horsepower each. Speed was 224 miles per hour max, 160 miles per hour cruise speed. You go 1,600 miles without refueling. You can climb up to 26,400 feet. In this particular version, when they converted it into a gunship, had three 7.62 millimeter SUU-11A Gatlin miniguns, or 10 30 caliber machine guns, and 48 MK-24 flares. And there are the guns. Again, just like all the other AC models, they fly a left-hand pattern, call it a pylon turn above the target. And the ACs were used in Vietnam as well as World War II, although the Vietnam era is when they came out with the AC version of it.
Okay, what we're looking at here is what's called the EB57B. B57 was a modified version of the English electric uh, aircraft, which was first flown in Britain in 1949. In March of 51, the U.S. Air Force contracted uh, the Glenn L. Martin Company to build the B-57 in the U.S. under a license agreement with Britain. The uh, Martin built 47 or B-57s made its first flight on July 20th of 1953, and production ended in 59 with a total of 403 B-57s produced for the United States Air Force. It was known as a night intruder. It was a medium jet bomber replacement for the Asian Douglas B-26 Invader. The B-57B model was the most produced model and featured unique improvements like having uh, the crew members seated in a tandem and rotary type bomb door with bombs mounted on the inner surface of the door and arming the B-57 with machine guns and cannons. This EB-57B was last flown by the 158th Air National Guard Station in Vermont. Only 22 B-57Bs were converted to the EB-57. The B-57 saw service in Vietnam. Out of 94 B-57s assigned to the Vietnam Theater, 51 were lost in combat. It had two turbojet engines rated at 7,220 pounds of thrust. Speed was 570 max. Range of 2,000 miles with external fuel tanks, which is what you see on the end of the wings there. Surface ceiling of uh, 49,000 feet. The EB model had no armament, but the B model had eight 50 caliber M3 machine guns or four 20 millimeter M39 cannons and 4,500 pounds of internal bomb bay and 28,000 pounds of bombs mounted under the wings. And next is a big icon from World War II. This is the B-17. B-17 Flying Fortress. Designed by Boeing Aircraft in 1934, one of the most famous aircraft ever built. Had a speed of 287 miles per hour max, a range of 3,400 miles, could go up to 35,600 feet. Armament, 13 50 cal M2 Browning machine guns and up to 8,000 pounds of bombs, depending on the range of the mission. The nose here was a nose gunner and the bombardier set right there. He took control of the aircraft when they got over the target. Underneath was a belly gunner. And I understand from my history about these aircraft, you had to be a very special requirements to be a gunner in that turret and one of those requirements were you had to be around five feet tall at the top was also a gunner position as well as in the tail and also they had a gun right there on both sides we see that plexiglass although in this particular display it's not showing it. Tail gunner set back here. Browning machine guns.
And the next aircraft is the B-25 bomber from World War II. What made this a very famous aircraft was the Doolittle Raid when we attacked Tokyo. This is the B-25 Mitchell. Had a crew size of uh, two to three crew members for the TB-25N and five crew members for the B-25B. Had radial engines putting out 1,700 shaft horsepower each. Had a speed of 275 max with 230 crews. Had a range of 2,700 miles, a surface ceiling of 24,000 feet, and armament. It had none on the TB-25N model, 130 caliber machine gun and 450 caliber machine guns and up to 5,000 pounds of bombs on the B-25B uh, model. In the front was the nose gunner. And I'll read you a little something about Doolittle. On April 18th, 1942, Gallant men of the United States Air Force, led by Brigadier General, then Lieutenant Colonel James H. Doolittle, flew from the USS Hornet 800 miles across the Pacific during World War II to bomb Tokyo. April 18th, 1962, to honor these brave men and women in memory of those who sacrificed their lives in service to their country, the United States Air Force presents the last B-25 bomber home of the Doolittle Raiders while training was here at Eglin Air Force Base for that historic flight. When I was in the Civil Air Patrol before I went into the military, which is an auxiliary of the United States Air Force, we did one of our summer encampments here and they took us out to the area where Doolittle actually practiced how they were gonna get a B-25 off of an aircraft carrier. And what they did was they took an area out in a field and they marked it off how long the aircraft carrier was. And then they tried different ways to try and get it off the ground before they got to that marking, which meant that they had to start stripping things out of the airplane because there was no way to take it off of a carrier in the configuration that they were in. They took the guns out. They took extra equipment, anything that didn't require, that wasn't a requirement for physical flight, they took out of this airplane. And they kept doing that until eventually they were able to reach the mark to get it off of that short area of a carrier. And then as we know, they went from there to California where they were loaded aboard the USS Hornet and off to Tokyo they went. When it came time to actually do the mission, every one of them were able to get off the deck successfully. Pounding on around. Next up, we have the MH-53. This is an M model Pavlo. The MH-53M Pavlo is modified MH-53J model with the Interactive Defense Avionics Systems Multi-Mission Advanced Tactical Terminal Displays. The system enhances present defense capabilities of the Palo. It provides instant access to a total battlefield situation and also provides a new level of detection avoidance so crews can avoid and defeat threats such as missiles that are fired out. The Scorsi HH-53 Super Jolly Green Giant, the U.S. Air Force version of the C-53 Sea Stallion, helicopter for long-range combat search and rescue missions. And this particular type model has been flown for many, many different missions. Uh, primarily is to rescue down aviators behind enemy lines. Or it could carry up to 38 troops, had a crew size of six. Power plant was two General Electric T64G 100 turboshaft engines 
rated at 4,330 shaft horsepower each. Weight of 32,000 pounds empty, 46,000 pounds max. At a speed of 196 miles per hour match with 173 mile per hour cruise. A range of 6, 000, or 690 miles. Uh, that's, I believe, without the external fuel tanks. Ceiling of 16,000 feet. And for armament, because it was a rescue aircraft, it had a combination of three 7.62 miniguns or 50 caliber machine guns mounted on the left and right side, immediately behind the flight deck and on the ramp. Sticking out the front here is an aerial refueling boom so they can get fuel while they're flying. It goes out way longer, it comes out to about right here. And we're still using this aircraft today, although not this particular model. The newer ones are a lot more updated. Updated avionics, counter, uh, countermeasures, payload capabilities, upgraded engines, radar systems. Got a cargo ramp in the back for bringing on equipment and troops, personnel. Those are fuel tanks on the side there, not bombs. And it has a rescue hook for pulling up the down aviator if it's in a location that you can't uh, land the helicopter. And up next, we get into the Cold Air War. This is the SR-71 Blackbird, which is still today, even after being retired, the fastest aircraft that man has ever built that's controlled with a pilot. This is the SR-71A Blackbird. You're looking at an engine right there. The uh, thrust of this, they had two Pratt & Whitney J58 turbojet engines rated at 34,000 pounds of thrust each. And its speed that we know of was Mach 3.3 plus, which is 2,510 miles per hour, 2,403 miles per hour cruise. Can fly 3,682 miles without refueling, but had the capability of aerial refueling. And we know that it could fly to at least 85,000 feet plus. Most about this aircraft, even to this day, is still unknown because it was such a classified aircraft, top secret, not much was known about them. But I do know this much, the pilots that flew these also qualified to get astronaut wings because they flew right at the outer edges of our atmosphere. Next up, the B-52 bomber, which we're still using today. Not this particular one, obviously. This is an older model, a G model. That's refueling tanks, or uh, fuel tanks on the end. They had wheels on the end of the wings because when it was loaded with bombs on the pylons and our fuel, those wings droop down a lot. This one is in the process of being repainted, so it'll probably look really, really pretty in uh, a few more weeks. A 
Again, this is the B-52G Straddle Forces. A little bit about this aircraft. There was 193 of the G models built. Had a crew size of six. Eight Pratt & Whitney J57P 43WB turbojet engines rated at 3,750 pounds of thrust with water injection. Speed was 634 miles per hour max with a 526 mile per hour cruise speed. Range was 7,300 miles with tanks, but it also had the aerial refueling capability. Surface ceiling of 47,000 feet. Had four 50 caliber M3 machine guns in the tail turn. Can carry up to 50,000 pounds payload of mixed ordnance, bombs, mines, missiles, and also nuclear weapons. And that is one of the nuclear weapons that it used to carry. That is called the Hound Dog. And if I'm not mistaken, the G model was the last B-52 to have a tail gun. And by the time they upgraded this version, the tail gun are no longer set in the back. But in the older versions of the B-52, the tail gun are set back here. And there's the gun. In this version, the tail gunner sits up front uh, behind and below the pilots and I believe they called them a weapon systems operator is what they were upgraded to or what they were called As I speak, we have B-52s that are on alert right now for what's happening over in Ukraine. I'll tell you a little bit about the Hound Dog real quick, this missile. This thing had a speed of Mach 2 plus, range of 597 miles, ceiling of 56,200 feet, and it carried a W28 thermonuclear warhead. Next up is a Russian MiG from the Colair. We probably got this when a pilot defected at some point. This is called the MiG-21F or F-13 fish bed. The MiG-21F is a short-range day fighter interceptor for Russia. It had a speed of uh, 1,300 miles per hour max, 550 mile per hour cruise, a range of only 400 miles. So that wasn't very good for this particular type platform. 
ceiling of 50,000 feet, had one 30 millimeter cannon and two K-13 Atoll air-to-air missiles or FAB 500 pound bombs, FAB 250 bombs or UV-1667 rocket pods. Next up, another Cold War B-47. This is the B-47E Stratojet. Some of you may recall a video that I did uh, this year about a nuclear bomb off the coast of Georgia that's missing and we've never found. This is the type of aircraft that it jettisoned from. The B-47 first flew December of 1947 and the first B-47A was delivered to the Air Force in 1951. Had a max speed of 607 miles per hour, a range of 4,990 miles, ceiling of 40,000 feet. Had two 20 millimeter cannons, an external tail, designed as a bomber, could carry payloads of up to 25,000 pounds of bombs, conventional, and nuclear. And this one does not have the gun installed in the tail, but that's where it went. Next up, very famous aircraft that was used for many, many years, particularly in the Vietnam War by both the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, as well as the Air Force Thunderbirds flew it for a while on their flight demonstration team, as did the Navy Blue Angels. And that is the F-4 Phantom. Big bomb looking thing is a fuel tank. Two, one on each pod. This particular version is the F-4C Phantom II, made by McDonnell Douglas Corporation. Had two crew members, a pilot and a weapon systems operator. It was powered by two General Electric turbojet engines, rated at 17,000 pounds of thrust with afterburners. Had a speed of 1,400 miles per hour max. 590 was the normal cruise speed range of seven or 1,750 miles with the uh, external tanks and it had aerial refueling capability. Ceiling was right around 60,000 feet. Carry up to 16,000 pounds of external uh, to include nuclear or conventional bombs, rockets, missiles, or 20 millimeter cannon pod in various combinations. The F-4 Phantom. On the back of it is a hook for catching an aircraft carrier wire. They can land them on carriers. Next is the F-105 Starfighter. 
I had a speed of 1,150 miles per hour. 575 was the max or normal cruise speed. Range was 850 miles. Surface ceiling was 85,000 feet. Armament was two AIM 9B Sidewinder air to air surface missiles. Later versions mounted two more missiles. Very sleek, short, small. Very nice aircraft. Next is the 101B Voodoo, uh, Voodoo a JF version. Uh, this is a F-101B model by McDonnell Douglas. Had a speed of 1,174 miles per hour. Range was 1,520 miles. Surface ceiling was 54,800 feet. Could carry up to four AIM-4 Falcon guided missiles or two Air 2A Genie nuclear rockets. This is the F-100C Super Sabre, built by North American Airlines. Had a speed of 920 miles per hour, max 590 was the normal cruise. Range was 1,350 miles. Surface ceiling was right around uh, 49,000 feet. Armament was four M39 20 millimeter cannons uh, 42, 2.75 in rockets, and up to 5,000 pounds of bombs externally. These were primarily used during the Vietnam conflict, and it had aerial refueling capability. Instead of having a probe that came out of the nose, this one came out of the wing, as you can see right there. Next up is a Korean War Air fighter jet. This is the F-86 Sabre. This is an F model. Had a speed of uh, 687 miles per hour was the max. 540 was the cruise. Range was 1,525 miles with tanks. Surface ceiling of 49,600 feet. Armament was six 50 caliber M3 Browning machine guns, which you see right there, three on each side of the nose. It also could carry 5,200 pound payload of bombs, rockets, or fuel tanks, and had one pilot. This is the F-84 Thunderstreak. Another uh, aircraft from many, many years ago. The first prototype flew in 1950. Deliveries began in 1954, primary to tactical air command, ground support, fighter bomber type missions. This is an F-84F model. Had a speed of 685 miles per hour max, a range of 1,900 miles, surface still on 44,000 feet. Armament was six 50 caliber machine guns and 24 five inch rockets or 6,000 pounds of bombs. This is the T-38, the T-Bird they called it. And this is an A model. It's a two place T-33 jet was designed for training pilots qualified to fly propeller driven aircraft for jet engines. It was developed from the single seat F-80 fighter by lengthening the fuselage slightly more than three feet to accommodate a second cockpit. 
had a speed of 525 miles per hour max, a range of 1,000 miles, surface ceiling of 45,000, and it was primarily designed as a trainer to teach how to fly jets after they left the props. And this is a Huey belonging to the Air Force, their version of it. This is a UH-1M. Uh, my first three years in the Army, I was a crew chief, a flying crew chief on a UH-1H. Uh, but anyhow, let's talk about the M model. Had a speed max of 144 miles per hour. Typical cruise was 128. Range was 332 miles. Ceiling was 18,500 feet. And there was all types of armament that you could hang off of these things. Machine guns, rocket pods, uh, many, many different type of platforms were used with the Huey. I believe this particular one, or this particular type, was used in search and rescue operations. And we end up finally with another F4 as the sun is set on us. Except this one here, is a little unique. It's one of the later versions of the F4 that came out. And this is the RF4C Phantom II. In the early 1950s or 60s, I'm sorry, the US Air Force recognized the need for more tactical reconnaissance aircraft, which is how this one came to be. This particular one here, this actual aircraft saw service with the 460th Tactical Reconnaissance Wing in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. It was the latest assigned to the 3246 Test Wing at Eglin Air Force Base right here in Florida. Uh, difference is with the speed of this one was 1,459 miles per hour, range 1,750 miles with tanks. 59,400 surface ceiling. And uh, there were no armaments on this thing, although it could carry four AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. So it was basically used for reconnaissance type missions. The basic overall silhouette looks the same as regular F4s, but when you start looking at the nose, there's a big difference. Anyhow, that's it for the Armament Museum. The inside's closed, uh, so we're not gonna go there. Although I've already been on the inside and there's not too much there to show you. But uh, there is some pretty cool stuff inside. It talks about armament in the Air Force and all the different platforms that were used and a little bit more in-depth information about the different type of aircraft. So, that being said, hope you all enjoyed this. If you ever get down here to, uh, to Fort Walton Beach, Destin area, please come down and check out the Armour Museum. Really, really cool. Uh, if you have kids, bring them out here and let them see and touch these wonderful birds. It's because of places like this that we can keep the history of our military and full view of generations to come. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. And I'll see you later.